see that? There's no stopping now. Oh no, okay, so they all fall out without you having to do anything. So you drop it on there. See, that's in. But I've probably stuffed it up. The splendor of it. Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular DIY. Today, I finally got around to the Turing Machine Pulses. What's special about this? Well, lots of things, I'm sure. It's an expansion for the awesome Turing Machine, which is like a, a random note and pulse generator. <laughs> And what this does, the pulses, is that it expands it. So it kicks out more pulses in different places. But what is particularly interesting about this build is that it's full of surface mount. Surface mount, not a lot. It's not a difficult build. I mean, here's the PCB. It's not very big. There's not a whole lot going on on there, but there is a whole bunch of tiny weeny little resistors. And as you may know, I'm kind of preparing myself to embark upon the build of the Black Corporation Deckard's Dream Synthesizer, which is this huge thing. And it's got hundreds and hundreds of surface mount components. And I figure that it might be worthwhile for me to have a little bit of practice at that before I do something really bad to something really expensive. And pulses seems like the perfect opportunity to try out a couple of different ways of doing surface mount components because you absolutely can do them by hand, at least <laughs> that's what I think. I think you can. I mean, people talk about putting them in ovens and baking them and hot air guns and things like that. But I reckon soldering iron, bit of solder, bit of patience. I've seen it done on the internet, so it must be possible. And so this is my attempt to do that and to share that experience with you. I've pulled out all the stops on the cameras and bits and pieces trying to work out how best to film all this thing. I've got a bit of a time-lapse thing going on here. This stuff, I've got my fan, soldier line, bits magnifying glass. <sighs> I think I'm ready to go. All right, first of all, the bag. Let's have a look at the bag of bits. See this, or rather these, these are surface mount components. See that? So each one of those is a little resistor. And it's that that I've got to be dealing with. I've also got a tiny weeny IC as well, a little tiny integrated circuit to get on there. That, that's probably going to be the toughest bit. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Got a whole bunch of LEDs. That's cool, we like LEDs. These are the other resistors. A few connectors pair of knurlies. That's a bonus. The connector to connect it to the Turing machine. And lastly, all the little patch sockets that go on the board. We'll be doing those last, I imagine. And that is the front panel, which we'll be coming to later. Now, what I probably have to do Take off my glasses. There's no instructions for this. I had a look online and there's nothing to tell you what to do. There's a, a picture, a picture of the IC. I mean, that's helpful. That's helpful in itself, but it's not difficult. It really is just a bunch of patch sockets. These surface mount bits. Oh my goodness. And some LEDs and stuff. So who needs instructions, eh? So how does one approach this? Well, apparently you use thin solder, which is, which is what I've got relatively. It's not as thin as it could be, but it's gonna have to do. Now, my research has told me that there's a couple of schools of thought. I've got myself a flux pen. Now this is the idea of you stick it on, you stick it on things and it makes the solder flow better. That's what it does. It's an aid to solder flowing. Now I've seen some videos where people dab the flux pen onto the pads and then put the component on to that and then start soldering. I've also seen ones where you put a bit of solder on the pad first and then push the surface mount into it, which is what I did on that uh, VCO3340 where I encountered the first ever bit of surface mount that I did, just the one. And I just stumbled into it, stumbled through it and I got away with it. So here, 
I would like to try both those things, I think. Well, let me start by the way I did it originally. So first of all, I've got to try to cope with these little buggers in the first place. So if I start with these ones around the outside, the ones around the outside are 2K. And there's 1K in the middle. Does it say anything on these at all that would tell me what they are? So that says 1001. 1001. These ones say 2001. Okay. 2K, 2001. Five. So it says on the board itself 1K resistors within this square. All the others are 2K resistors around the outside. 2K. All right, so let's try some 2K then. Let's take these out. Let's hope that my little fan doesn't blow them away. <laughs> what do I do with that? I do have tweezers. Tweezers are very important. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll peel it off the back, peel it off the back, peel it off the front. I don't know, where do I peel it? Okay, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> oh no, okay, so they all fall out without you having to do anything. So let's keep them together. <laughs> you know this is going to go terribly, terribly poorly. Okay, so let's keep them together. Now, if you'd like to comment in the bottom on how you open one of these strips of, uh, of surface mount components, that would be great. I would be interested in that. So my choices are to dab a bit of solder on, push one of those into it, then put the other side on, or to flux pen it, or a combination of the two, I don't know. So let me do what I did, as I say. Let's use my soldering iron. Let's heat up the pad and add a little bit of solder, like that. That's simple, that's simple, that's not too bad. Then I'm going to take a tiny weeny thing with very little pressure, <laughs> I'm going to attempt to drop it on there. Well, that that should be all that's required. See, that wasn't hard. It really wasn't hard. I mean, it gets a bit floaty. It sort of floats around. You're going, oh, oh my goodness, how am I going to make that? And then, you know, and then it's there. So if I turn it around, put a bit more, sort of come in at a bit of an angle. We had to heat that up. Like that. For some reason my heart's pounding. <laughs> that seems to be all right. Interesting. Let me do another one like that just to sort of consolidate. So what did I do? I put, I heated up a pad, put some solder on it, and then took, oh, I then somehow found a little feather, heated up the solder, Put it to it. 
I'm just sort of pushing down lightly on the top just so that it goes flat so it's not like held at an angle or something. Now I reckon I could do this whole row one side then turn around and do the whole load back again. Why don't I try that? Okay well that was mostly solder onto the soldering iron as opposed to onto the pad. So the moment I attempt to do anything quickly, I kind of stuff it up. <laughs> right, so that's all those along there. Now I'm going to need a number of these to squish that in. Oh, he's gone, he's gone. Got to be careful, so careful. Right, I need to turn this bugger over. <laughs> See, there are no videos on how to turn over a surface mount uh, component. There we go. I'm farting around with this, these tweezers far too much. That's the problem. Is <laughs> that gone? <laughs> oh god now these are proper proper tweezers got them from thonk I think oh although I probably bent the ends or something stupid by messing about or picking something else up that I shouldn't be picking up with it. I've just got to get the hang of how hard, how hard to hold things. See, that's good. They're all on there and they're not falling off. They're not particularly straight. I'm not worried about straight. Are you worried about straight? I'm really worried about straight at this point. So now I do them this way around and add another dollop solder. Definitely could have done with a slightly pointier end to my soldering iron. I understand you can get different ends for it, but you know, at the same time, it is working. See, that is all those tiny weeny things all the way across there, and I think they're all right. Now, with the ones around this other side, the other way of doing it is with this, which was a, a flux pen. So the idea is that this is, acts both as a thing to move the solder and flow the solder and it also acts as a little bit of an adhesive. So if I put some on there, is that going on? <laughs> I don't know, how do you use this stuff? <laughs> I'm assuming it needs to get to the, that looks very dry to me. There's nothing, that's complete. Oh. Oh, okay. You push it down, and then it flows. Aha. All right. So, okay, flux pens, right? Apparently you push, and then the flux starts to flow down it. Or something. I have no idea. All I know is I've got a lot of sort of liquid now over those two pads. Has it gone between the two? I don't know. That's this is always the downside of, of trying to use specialist equipment when you don't have the first idea as to why or how, and you've never used it before. No one's ever showed you how. 
And when you've seen it on it on the internet, people already have it all together and they just go, dap, dap, bit of flux pen, yeah, no problem. Didn't see anybody fussing around with how to get it working the first time when they've never ever seen it before in their life. That's what my channel's about. <sighs> That's what my channel's about. Come on, tweezers. Anyway, so there's one on there, which is not sliding off. So it's kind of like the surface tension almost of the flux is keeping it there. So I should now just be able to solder straight on. Now that moved a little bit. Okay, I'm going to give that another go. Okay, tweezers seem to be working slightly better now that I've straightened the ends. Okay, put that like that. Heat up the pad. This stage, I have to say, we're putting solder on the pad first. Like that. Just feels better. Although there is something to be said for sticking the component directly on the board and then soldering to it. Although that didn't, well, you know, that only sort of works, depending on whether I'm doing it right. Don't know, I'm just sharing my experience. I am making this up as I go. So yeah, that is that is the first line, all of those 2K resistors, surface mount, all the way around the outside. That's amazing, I'm amazed by that. Right, let's try a bit more flux pen on the middle, but first of all, let's open up this row. Is there a better way of opening this up? Do you just rip it or something? Feels like it wants to come. Oh, believe in hell. Right, so flux pen. 1K resistors in the middle. <laughs> That's lots and lots. Let's spread that around a little bit. Do a couple. Let's use my other hand, see what happens. Definitely something about the flux that makes that makes the solder melt quickly. 
it just seems like an additional stage, you know, an added bit of faff when I really don't need any extra faff. I mean, the way this flows onto those pads is just amazing. That should be all of those resistors on there. I mean, it's much harder to check because it's not as if you can waggle legs or anything. And if it's on one side, then it's going to be pretty stiff on there. So there you go. Interesting. That wasn't too difficult. Really wasn't difficult. So in here, I have this tiny little chip, look. And that's going to have to go on here. <laughs> now there's a picture of this and it shows it this way around, 16. And it shows it with the writing, particular way up, like that, the right way up. With a line on it. So it seems to be a line on it, which is where the notch used to be back in the old days. And I guess what I'm going to have to do is solder some kind of corner leg. Well, there's no point looking at it. If I stick some solder onto here, heat this pad up. Then I have to move this into it, I guess. Oh, turned it around, don't want to do that. Oh, do me a favour. So. See, that's in. Right, well, let me do an opposite leg. That's actually not the opposite leg. <laughs> I meant to do this one here. Well, it's on there. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know how to approach it in any way other than just going, well, I, I guess I better do it then. I mean, should I be using big magnifying glasses on my face? Should I be using that head thing and a, and a torch? I mean, this isn't dead center now. It's all slightly over to one side, but the pads and the legs are still on the legs and the pads. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just keep at it. Let's warm up a pad. Add a little bit of solder. Not too much because I don't want it throwing itself over to the next pad. Well, there we go. I mean, that's all of the surface mount, I believe. And that's taken me about an hour to do 22, 22 surface mount bits and a chip. But it's only taken me an hour because I keep talking about it and looking at it and then avoiding it and doing it something else. So that is a remarkable thing, a remarkable feat. Now, how does the rest of it go together? That's the question. I mean, how, I guess the front panel just goes on to the jack sockets, 
the LEDs will need to go through the same side. And I've got this bit here, which I imagine has to go on like that. Right, there's no stopping now. I've only got half an hour to go pick the kids up. Usual time pressures involved in these things. LEDs then. Now with these, the long leg is positive. So in which case these go in like that. Positive. Now these don't want to be soldered in. Not until we've worked out the faceplate. Okay. Then these fellas. What I should do is take the nuts off before I put them on. That would be a clever idea. Good. Put this on, do up a couple of nuts. That should keep everything together while I solder it. That's the plan. Let's solder in all the jacks. We'll worry about the LEDs in a minute. Right, well some of those were a bit crappy <laughs> so I'm just going to do a couple of them again just not quite putting enough solder on is the main issue I think and that's of course a problem I had in my last build where I had one part of a jack socket that wasn't properly soldered okay so now it's just these little LEDs I need to make sure we're going through the holes Now I guess I have a choice as to whether I want them to go completely through the holes and poking out like so, or whether I want them to just sit back a little bit, which is what I really want, but I probably stuffed it up because <laughs> they're all going to want to go all the way through. If I'm using gravity, does that matter? No, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I think the more flashing lights, the better, ultimately. I mean, they're going to sit like this, so it's going to be pulled back a little bit. That's fine. I'm going with that, right? I'm going with that. Because once I've done these LEDs, it's, it's done. It's pretty much, no, it is completely and utterly done. It's looking all right, it's really looking good. It's potentially an awesomely made pulses. It's take me about an hour and a half, which is a bit more like it, but then it's a small build. There's not a whole lot going on. Just the surface mount was the only tricky bit. Oh look, I'm missing a thing. Honestly. There, now it's done. Now it's done. Now you can look at it. Look at the splendor of it. Isn't it an awesome thing? <laughs> yeah, all done. So let's pull something in and see if we can test it. I mean, if something just goes through it and it just sort of works, that's going to be totally amazing. Red line, red, red. That's good. 
So this is the Turing machine, kicks out stuff and it has one pulse output already that we use for triggering all sorts of things. What the pulses does is adds a massive expansion to that. So you've got all sorts of pulses coming out based on things I couldn't possibly understand at this point. So how we connect it is that on the back of here is an expansion port for it. So this isn't doesn't need its own power or anything. It just connects purely onto the back of here. Red, 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 red. Plugs in there. So when I put this back in here and put this the right way up alongside it, the idea is, right, that it just kind of works. So how do we know whether it works? <laughs> That's the question. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. Well, the tour machine needs a clock. So let's give it one. We can take a clock from the random rhythm. Oh, I've got lights. Look, they're all flashing. Should they be all flashing? <laughs> oh no, they're flashing differently. Look at that. Okay, well, let's make a, a sound quick to see whether I can have something of this. What? So, so I'm going to take output number one, which is a pulse, send that into here, which is a kick drum. Let's take output two and four for fun, stick that into the closed hi hat. Let's take, I don't know, output five, plug that into. The similar. <laughs> Take another one, plug that into trigger two. <laughs> so there you go, that's pulses, right there that is. Kicking out all sorts of bits and pieces. So yeah, I got away with another one. Did you see that? It's just sort of working. I mean, I haven't explored it as in what it's supposed to do or what it's doing, but it's kicking out a whole bunch of pulses. You could use that for triggering envelopes. You could use it for sequencing. You can use it for, for triggering drum modules and stuff as I was as I was doing there. You know, whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you like, it's just more, it's more randomness from the Turing machine, which is wonderful. That's what you want. But look how easily that came together. Wow. It wasn't, it wasn't a problem. I mean, I've been putting off doing this one for a long time because I assumed, absolutely assumed that I was gonna make a right hash of it and that this surface mount thing was out of reach and there's no way that I was gonna be able to pull any of that off. And yet it came together. No longer scared of surface mount. I mean, it's tricky. It's funny, I mean, I don't know how you feel about it when you're soldering, but I don't even know if I'm really actually looking. I'm not sure that my eyes are focused really on what's going on it's just sort of sort of going together <laughs> i'm using the force that's what it is yeah i'm just like closing my eyes and just doing like that no no i just mean it's it's weird because it's so small do i really need some kind of magnifying glass or helmet in order to, to do it properly i don't know it's just it's just there it's just sort of working yeah so well that was fascinating for me anyway and i've I pulled that off, I pulled it together, got a module, it works. I've done the surface mount. I now no longer have any excuses about getting started on the Decker's Dream. I've done everything, done all the prep, learned all the skills. <clears throat> well, you know, I've had a go like 
So it has to be the real deal next, I guess, or at least the beginning of it, because it's a long-term project. I'm not going to get it all done in a day or two. It's going to take weeks and months, really. So the plan is going to be just to chip away at it, just to chip away at it, this huge Deckard Stream synthesizer. But that was pulses. I hope that's helpful. I will try to do a video of it in a bit more use at some point soon. Um, but it was interesting, easy to do, really, really easy to do. It's no need to be afraid of surface mount. It's no need. It's not it's that difficult, at least what I've found so far. I mean, this is my, my first real attempt at it. I, I've shown it all to you what I did and how I did it. And it seemed okay. It seemed okay. <laughs> I seem to just get away with stuff. That's amazing. Anyway, hope that's been interesting for you. It's been fun for me. Time to go. And in the meantime, go make some tunes.